It's not every day that a black family in America can document its roots back more than 330 years. Many times the records of African American slaves weren't accurate or they weren't kept at all. Families were torn apart and a lot was lost. History, language, and many times their names. Well, tonight WSA 9's Michael Quander is going to introduce you to a family in the D.C. area that kept its name even through bondage. Look, rule number one of journalism, you don't make yourself a part of the story, but this one is personal. This is my family. This is our journey and one I'm so honored to be a part of. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. No, I'm, I'm still a little seeing girl. girl. As you look around. Father God, we thank you for this assembly. You can see their story in their eyes. I definitely have felt a lot of pride. Young and old, you can feel the history overflowing onto the dinner table. I had six sisters and four brothers. Everybody's gone but me. Family with the promise to never let their story, their legacy, fade away. I said, oh, yes, Lord, this is our story. This is the Quander story right here. And part of that story takes us here to George Washington's Mount Vernon. And before I be a slave, At the time of his death, records show the first president of the United States of America, along with his wife, owned more than 300 slaves. They all had various jobs, most of them working on the fields on several farms across the nearly 8,000 acre estate. We thank you for our ancestors who have worked and toiled. President Washington began questioning the morality of slavery, but he kept his views a secret until he died and freed the slaves he owned in his will in 1799. However, more than half of the slaves in Mount Vernon were still considered property of Martha Custis Washington's family, and neither she nor the president had the right to set them free. God, we know that freedom is not just for tomorrow, but it's for today. Despite his will, the 123 slaves Washington freed weren't released until two years later in 1801. On that list was a young woman, a teenager raised on River Farm, a slave named Nancy. Nancy Carter Quander. Always known the history, too often we take those things for granted. Yeah, now this story of discovery goes deeper, but to explain it, to really understand it, we have to go back to the beginning of my journey. <laughs> I think the resemblance is there. This is my dad, Michael Quander Sr. His father's name was Clarence Claudius Quander, and his mom's name was Helen. My grandparents had seven children, including my dad. Family documents allow us to trace his family line back to his great-great-grandparents in the early 1800s, Charles Henry Quander and Lucinda Hodge, who had at least 14 kids that we know of. My grandfather, Clarence Claudius, served as a first lieutenant in the United States Army and later died when my dad was just 10 years old. The pain you feel from a loss is always going to be with you for the rest of your life. But he says things were never really the same after his father passed away. His passing, we kind of reverted into ourselves. Now, this is an important part of the story. It explains my disconnection from the Quander family. Well, that was until now. Here we go. We started at the Moreland Spingarn Research Center at Howard University, up several stories. We made it to the seventh floor. And inside of these boxes uh. are the full Quander family archives. You see, I always knew these documents existed, but I've never seen them with my own eyes. How are you doing, Mike? Good so good you. to see you again. Good to say, give me a hug there, right? This is Rohula Mean Quander. A lot of us call him Cousin Ro. He's the family historian. All right, well, let me put my gloves on here because all of this is, this quantum material is very sacred to me. Rohulamine spent years digging through archives in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia and documenting oral history told by elders in the family. Everybody of the Quanda family was not uh, enslaved by George Washington. But the connection to George Washington is real. Oral history traces the name back to Ghana on the west coast of Africa, where family members have reconnected. Now this picture is very important because uh, it's just a tree, but it represents a lot. Now historians say African ancestors revealed that slave traders captured Egya Amkwando right here at this spot between family villages. He was taken away. 
Now, you'll really want to pay attention here. It's believed the name Quander came from Amquando of the Fonti tribe. One theory from ancestral family members explains the name was lost in translation when slave ship masters believed the Ghanaian name Amquando to untrained ears actually sounded like I am Quando. By the 1700s, we begin to see the O fade away and replaced with ER. The name transformed into what we now know as Quander. It's believed that Egya had two sons, Henry Quando and another who seemed to have disappeared. And one went one direction and one went the other. One of the oldest documents comes from the Maryland side of the family during the colonial days in 1684. So today we're going to look at the Charles County um, wills for Henry Adams. Henry Adams was a colonial legislator and slave owner in Charles County, Maryland. His will is the oldest detailed document in the country where a variation of the Quander name is found. And there we have, it is my will and pleasure that immediately after my death that Henry Quando and Margaret Pug be free to all intents and purposes as though they were no Negroes. So there you have the first reference to your ancestor in the records here. Wow, so this is the document that basically set them free. It set them free, yes. The idea of coming together has always been very central to who we are. The Quanders have had family reunions every year without fail since 1926. That's 91 years in counting. And at one point, you know, when Ronald Reagan was president, talking about their oldest documented black family in history, <gasps> I think I might have been in high school when I heard about that. The family tricentennial reunion was celebrated 33 years ago in 1984 and received national recognition and media coverage. The Quanders were also involved in helping to preserve history at Mount Vernon, where remains of dozens of slaves have been found in unmarked graves. A lot of them were buried with no tombstone. They don't even know how many bodies are in this ground. A memorial for slaves was established, and an exhibit now exists at Mount Vernon called Lives Bound Together. This is where Nancy Carter Quander is listed as one of the 19 slaves whose story is highlighted. It goes down several generations. Nancy Carter became a Quander after she was freed and married Charles Quander. There are no clear records of where Charles Quander came from before he married Nancy, but it's believed that all of the Quanders are descendants of Henry Quando and his lost brother. I to put you down in my journal, man. Mount Vernon's first black interpreter guide was a Quander. All right, Quando. Yeah. And another family member, Jay Quander, he also worked there. Our parents used to be slaves, forefathers, slaves here. And here my son is, he's the director of food and beverage. <laughs> the Quanders went from being slaves and farmers to teachers and administrators. I looked to them for inspiration and because of them I became a teacher. And even if it's a boomerang, you can see it. That's not who I want to be. And that can be a strength too. You know how they say um, history is power almost. Yes. Um, for so long I, um, I've known about the history. My family has not done a good job of connecting me with the Quanda family. Yeah, I understand. I understand. <laughs> because this is part of the problem with the Quanda. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get emotional. But no, you don't have to. But a lot but of us. It means yeah. a lot to me yeah. to be able to yeah. sit here with you and to yeah. go through these documents and, and realize this is where you came from. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a lot, mm -hmm. a lot to face reality, to realize you're in the same family as Nellie Quander, who was a co-incorporator and first international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. And Elizabeth, or Sis Quander, was a singer with Duke Ellington. There was also Paul Quander, a former deputy mayor for public safety and justice in D.C. And Rohila Mean Quander, our family historian, is an author and retired senior administrative judge. The situation in North Korea demands... General Vincent Brooks is also a descendant of the Quander family. He's currently the United Nations Command and Combined Forces Command over the United States Forces, Korea. The Quander name kept showing up in the right place places like street signs all over the DMV and this school right here in Fairfax County. It stands for something. These experiences make us who we are. And like many families, we don't know everything. Parts of our backstory lost somewhere between the pages of history that may never be uncovered. But now, sitting around this dinner table, Quander family members say the key to preserving history and protecting such a rich legacy is through education faith, and focus. 
They hope that through their stories of perseverance and rising from the ashes, that you're inspired to dig deeper into your heritage and stand strong even in the face of adversity. Reporting in Washington, Michael Quander, WUSA 9. It's a powerful thing to know who you are and have the power of place. If you would like to trace your own genealogy, much like Michael did, you can go to our WUSA 9 website or mobile app. You'll find links to online databases where you can start your journey simply by typing in your name.